Hello and welcome to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Mario Scavello of the 176th District. Today, we're having a show here in my district office, the Northeast Search and Rescue. And um, the uh, chief is uh, Bruce uh, Barton and Ken Porter, the canine handler. Gentlemen, I've known for quite a while since my uh, uh, mayor and uh, county commissioner, the work that you yep. guys do in the community. And what a pleasure it is to, to have you on my show and to discuss and promote what you do, the good things that you do here in the community and outside the community. Um, so, Bruce, welcome. And let me start with you and uh, talk, talk to me about Northeast Search and Rescue. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's actually our 40th anniversary of the team. Wow. Uh, we started uh, 1972 when I was still in high school at Strasburg High School. And Jeez. So it's, uh, it's, it's been an interesting 40 years, a lot of, a lot of history and a lot of interesting things. Um, the team has grown. It's probably now bigger than it's ever mm -hmm. been in, over the years, and um, it, it's changed quite a bit. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of different things that have happened in, in search and rescue. Uh, it's gotten more recognized. It used to be uh, people didn't know what search and rescue was, yeah. and uh, now we've we've gotten uh, a little bit more recognition, unfortunately, due to incidents that have happened and, yeah. you know, and, uh, Murrow building explosions where they use search dogs. A lot of what we do is, is with the search dogs. That's probably what we're known for the most is the search and rescue dogs that we have. And uh, we've used those for years to find uh, lost people, walkaways from nursing homes, uh, lost hunters, um, you know, any anytime anybody is, is you know, gotten disoriented and gotten lost in the, in the wilderness, and actually, and many times even in urban areas. And know, that happens quite place. a bit here in the in the in the county. Yeah. I know that uh, yeah. the, the, they go into the woods and they just really uh, no idea of where they end up, and uh, yeah. especially in the cold, that yeah. must. Uh, we've had a few yeah. uh, that, that I know of in at the top of the mountain in the last year or so yeah it's uh you know there was there was a lot of the i know there was a lot of legislative talk and uh with the silver alerts mm -hmm. you know and uh that program i don't think really kind of came out quite the way i'd like to have seen uh, it yeah but uh you know it's 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 something where we need to uh you know, do you need to have some legislation? That's probably the biggest problem we face as, as an organization in search and rescue. And, and through the, we have a state council of, of the, all the search and rescue teams in the state. There's the Pennsylvania Search and Rescue Council, which I'm a board member of, and our team is a member of. And we need, you know, we need the recognition of, of the search and rescue teams statewide. And uh, there is nobody that's per se responsible for search and rescue. It doesn't fall under any one agency, and that's probably our biggest uh, shortfall uh, wow. as, as an organization, mm -hmm. is that, you know, who calls us, what do, who do we have standards under, whether it should be Pima, Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency, Department of Health, uh, you know, under that routine, uh, de uh, Department of uh, Conservation Natural Resources, you know. We, we do need to, and I think legislatively that's something that the state needs to look at and find us that home, you know, see which organization. Um, the state police uh, in other states, uh, like New Mexico, the state police actually provide uh, the coordination for all search and rescue uh, in the state. And, uh, and I look at it as, as being a good starting point uh, for any kind of search. Um, you know, we've had a number of searches just in the past few months, um, up in one up in Wayne County, most recently. That um, you know, nobody looked for the gentleman walked away from a uh, self you know care uh, lodging facility mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. in Wayne, mm -hmm. and um, nobody looked for him for days. No, you know, nothing was started. There was like an initial report, and nothing went beyond that. No, nobody was called in, and and the part of the problem is, is the system falls apart. Mm -hmm. because the state police mm -hmm. aren't trained in mm -hmm. what resources are available yeah. and there's nobody designated. They don't get training, you know, when, when they go through the academy as to, you know, what should we do when we have somebody? It, and, and it's always that issue of is it a missing person, a runaway, if it's, you know, kids, all right, or is it a lost person? Lost person being in the woods, mm -hmm. missing person, you know, they'll classify them as missing persons a lot of times, and they could be anywhere. Yeah. And yeah. that's generally a law enforcement decision that has to be made. They have to look at that 
and make that decision. And the troopers need, I think, more help in, in understanding those things. And that's something that, you know, they probably need to do at the academy and doing in-service well, we do have a tremendous you know. amount, many younger ch troopers it is. that have been coming of, out. Yeah, a and lot of new so, guys. And, uh, and there's you know, more coming on, And I there's think, more too. coming on, and, yeah. and, you know, all due respect, that they do need, uh, uh, to me anyway, a little, as, as time goes by, yeah. but we've got a great police force. And, oh, yeah. Uh, and, um, but I, I agree that yeah. sometimes we, uh, we might overlook something that might, yeah. should be part of the program. Yeah. And, it, and, and, you know, and if you look, and a lot of more of what we're doing now in, in the past few years is the hunter, lost hunters have dramatically dropped in the past five years because of GPS and cell phones. Yeah, and, isn't that amazing? And that, yeah. Abby's yeah. it. And that's Abby. Abby's, yeah. That's my girl, Abby. Um, she, uh, you know, she doesn't get out as much because the hunters have the GPSs and they get yeah. themselves out. And the cell phones, uh, you know, we, we still hear, you know, the fire companies will get a call and I'm on so-and-so trail and I'm near this place. Mm -hmm. and, and the fire company, hey, I, we know where that is. Mm -hmm. You know, and they take a pickup truck, go in and get them and it's over with. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so those types of calls we don't get so much. Um, we still get a lot of, of the... The, the elderly, uh, Alzheimer's is, you know, a big one yeah. or different, yeah. different levels of dementia. And, yeah. and, I, and I think that's something the state, you know, as, yeah. as overall has to, yeah. to keep working on and coming up with. You know, when you just mentioned that the, the, with the elderly, when they get into the woods, they, they, they lose it and they don't know exactly where they are. Sure. Yeah. And they, you know, they don't have a cell phone on them. No. And in, ma in many cases, because if they had right. the cell phone, like you said, with right. the GPS that we, um, and that's where you guys come into play. Yeah. It? But it, when it happens in the cold weather and the freezing weather, and they yeah. can't be out there that long, yeah. hypothermia and all that. Right. So, with with the with the Ebby here, how many how many has Ebby been involved in? Them? Oh, she's been on she's been on quite a few. She's uh, she's she's I'll say unfortunately got most of her reputation for finding. Uh, bodies you know uh, and recovering people that have so uh, either drowned or search and recovery yeah recovery katrina she's she's had three life finds in mm -hmm. in her you know 11 or 11 12 years now mm -hmm. and uh um you know so she's she's had a lot of experience she you know she's she's been around the world she was uh we, down in aruba we went down to aruba looking for natalie holloway we spent a week down there um we did some search in there. A lot of that was was based around the uh, landfill, and uh, she's she actually searched. We had a gentleman disappear here in Stroudsburg about a year and a half ago, and um, they thought maybe he may have ended up down in uh, Penargil at the landfill. So we were down there with her, you know, searching, and uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately he was found deceased uh, down south and mm -hmm. uh, had been transported with his own car out of the area. Um, you know, she started her career off um, really at uh, at the trade center. Where I was I was working uh, with the FBI and the NYPD, and we we put together a task force of of uh, cadaver dog handlers, recovery dog handlers, um, to work at the Staten yeah. Island landfill. Mm -hmm. And we spent mm -hmm. uh, two weeks there. Mm -hmm. And so she's she's mm -hmm. had a uh, you know quite a uh, mm. extensive time of it. And we mm. have you know. Um, right now we have uh, what about thirteen? I think about thirteen dogs. Ken, wow. uh, yeah. you know, Ken, Ken, you're the he's, Ken's the handler. Ken is one of our yeah one of our handlers, and he, uh, you know he's he's been with us four years now. He yeah. was doing dogs for yeah. quite a few years before that, yeah. and uh, his for you had one of your first finds right after he went operational back. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, about three years ago, I guess. Ken, you're relatively new as a volunteer with the with the with the organization. Am I correct? How long? Yes, is? yes. What what got you interested? What made you? When I retired, I was looking for something to do, and I'd actually read a book on search and rescue, uh -huh. and Bruce was mentioned in it quite frequently. Uh -huh. So um, I just looked him up, looked up the uh, Northeast, and mm -hmm. gave a call and got involved. Wow. I of the canines. What what? Specific breed would you feel is the, probably the best to train? I, I guess that could. Yeah, yeah that, that's a loaded question. It's a loaded yeah. question. Yeah. <laughs> we have fun with that within the group because yeah. there's many different breeds, and mm -hmm. we all. Claim Everybody's got a best. different feeling, probably. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a German Shepherd guy, and it, and actually, my first two dogs were German Shepherds, so uh -huh. I'm, I'm sort of a German Shepherd dog. It's all the dogs have different 
mm -hmm. you know, capabilities. Like Border Collies, you know, I, when I, this, she's my third dog, and mm -hmm. I had two German Shepherds, and they're great dogs. They're really well-rounded. Mm -hmm. uh, the Border Collies got the brains. Mm -hmm. You know, they're very analytical mm -hmm. about how they do things. So. How long is the training? It's ongoing. It never stops. It never stops. It never stops. It never stops. stops. Yeah. yeah. It'll usually take a year and a half to two years to get certified. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty good. It just depends how much time yeah. the handler puts into it. Now, outside of the dogs, you you guys also dive, am I right? You know, do you have divers? Uh, we don't have divers anymore. We used to. We used to. The cost of, of diving is just, you know, it's about uh, $10,000 a diver to equip them. So wow. It's, you know, and the training and everything. And then how many calls do you get? So we've gotten away from that. We do do uh, a lot of water rescue. We have uh, five state uh, certified instructors within our team. So we're teaching that all the time. And uh, we did go uh, uh, 2011 up into um, Schuylkill, uh, or, uh, Susquehanna County mm -hmm. for the flooding up in Great Bend. We had, mm -hmm. our, we had our water rescue team up there. Mm -hmm. uh, we did that, you know, through Pima. Um, as a as a response, and uh, we provide water rescue. We just recently had a water rescue here in Stroudsburg with the Stroudsburg Fire Company, and um, you know it's it you know it's it's something that doesn't happen a lot, but mm -hmm. it happens. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you know uh, just for the plug on you know water rescue is don't drive flooded roads, plain and yeah. simple. You hear all the warnings, and plain and simple heed those warnings because you don't know if that road is even there it may look like there's only a couple inches but the road can be missing if you, you or know. if you see water on a roadway you yeah. don't know what type of uh, you yeah. know if you, especially if you're new in an area yeah where you, you can have a, a sharp de decline and then right. you're driving right into this yep. that could be you know um, yep. especially three, four five six feet high easily you know it's especially under the bridges when you get into some of the cities where the they have railway bridges or overpasses and the roads will normally dip down so it may be six inches here but it can be five or six feet you know um, underneath the bridge and swift water uh, going over it only takes five to six inches to sweep you know most cars off wow. and then it'll just blow you right off the road um, water's got a lot of power you know i i, I know that uh, gosh a few years ago as a young man going to work and uh it on, on 115 somewhere mm -hmm. and uh it was Storm. He, he lived in country place, and he, right. he was taken right right into the stream. Yes. His small car it wasn't a big vehicle. Yes. Were you involved? I don't know if you remember. No, that. we. I remember. Yeah, we weren't we weren't involved in it. Uh, uh, unfortunately, that's that's another one of uh, probably the shortcomings. You know, locally here is is we don't have we have a number of departments that have you know the training and people, but we don't really have a good well organized response plan for water, mm -hmm. and um, you know that's. That's something I hope someday before I yeah. retire we'll see change, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and a lot of areas don't. People underestimate the water, and mm -hmm. you know, you need to have those resources and that and that training. Yeah, know? yeah. Ken, so you let's go back to you a little bit. You're, you're recently new with them, and you you really read up on it. It was something you wanted to be interested. In. So. Um, with with the dogs, with with each and every one of the canines, how many did you have again? Uh, Around thirteen. About thirteen. Thirteen. Right thirteen. Now, yeah. um, and you're involved in every one of them. You, you... No, I have my own dog. Oh, Bruce. I see. Bruce and Emmy are canine coordinator. They train them. They, they train. train. They train right. us and they train them. Okay. So, so every pretty uh, each one of your members has pretty much their own dog. Is that how it works? Yeah. All the dogs are privately owned and privately stay owned. at the house and. You know, okay, they, and I guess now we're going to get into a question that I know um, people out there are wondering: How do you get funded? Um, how do you begging in front of Walmart and Kmart is the biggest things. Yeah. Um, you know, is donations. Mm -hmm. um, get a little bit of some corporate stuff, but most of it is just uh, you know fundraising at you know public mm -hmm. locations and that. Mm -hmm. So it's it makes it hard it's 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 expensive you know insurance just keeps climbing you know i mean that's probably one of our biggest bills and fuel obviously every time we get a surge and a lot of times and we we don't just serve monroe county we serve 14 counties including two in new jersey mm -hmm. as what we consider our primary response area mm -hmm. so we get calls into luzerne and schuylkill and lackawanna pretty routinely mm -hmm. multiple times a year and every time you go out there i mean that's a couple hundred dollars worth of fuel 
yeah. you know, just to run the, the rescue truck out. So. Yeah, I was looking at some of your statistics at 5,627 hours last year. Yeah, just about 6,000. And it's probably well over that because that's that's only what we log on the system, on the computer mm -hmm. system. So it's, yeah, 6,000 hours between, and that's primarily probably about 15 to 16 people that are putting those hours in. Uh, we have some reserve members, but about 30 people all together in the team right now. Early on, we, we, you mentioned um, uh, how, uh, that there's, a, there's many across the, the, the Commonwealth. So mm -hmm. How many are there? Are you familiar with that number? Um, within the council, uh, I believe we're running probably around 28 or something like that in that 20. range. There's probably more than that that are search and rescue teams. And, and there again, it's what classifies you as a team. And that's, yeah. that's one of the issues we have is, is mm -hmm. we, have a, you know, we have that problem with... Um, and we've talked about this in the past as far as emergency vehicle plates and stuff like yeah. that, classifications. We've, we've tried that. Yeah. and We've been you know, down that road. Yeah. And, and, and hopefully at some someday we'll get this ad addressed. Yeah. Because I agree yeah, with you guys. Yeah. And, you know, we're looking at that again. And, uh, uh, you know, as, as a chief of the search and rescue team, I can have a red lights and sirens on my private vehicle, right? But our, our response vehicle can't. You know, so, yeah. you know, how to, it, it, it needs, there's something needs to be changed there in that law. And it's, that's definitely something we need to come back and look at again and, you know, keep pushing for. So I think what, you know, we have a new chair now in the, uh, in the transportation committee and maybe the new chair mm -hmm. might have a different feeling right. towards it than the right. prior chair. So hopefully that could be something that we, that we have addressed. Yep. 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 Um, you know, in, in, in talking to you, gentlemen, I, you know, this is all volunteer stuff. There's no salaries here, correct? No, nope. you know, and nope. it's all volunteer. So, so you, and a majority of time also has got to be to fundraising because without that, right? my gosh, you know. What are some of you, you know, some of your successes? Let's, you know, I guess. Yeah, it's, I mean, uh, you know, some of the big things are, and I was just looking at fundraising just as an example, 361 hours. Mm -hmm. of fundraising time. My gosh. And that's primarily yeah. standing in yeah. front of Walmart or Kmart. But uh, success-wise, I mean, I, you know, I think we've had a lot. I mean, obviously the Trade Center, we had a lot of involvement uh, in that with the dogs. And we had, we had dogs there, uh, mm -hmm. Katrina. We had dogs uh, from our team and from teams all across the country uh, down there for two months doing recoveries. Um, you know, most recently the water rescue in Stroudsburg, you know. Uh, you know, to me, that was that was an important one because I've trained so many years mm -hmm. and never got to, I mean, I get to use it for certain things, but never got to really, Yeah. I've been out of town when we've had other ones. Yeah, I was, yeah, you know, yeah, on the road, yeah. stuff like that. But that one I got to actually participate in. So to me, that was personally a, you know, a, a success where you say, hey, you do all this training, you know. The dogs is a little bit better because you get to see the progression in the dogs, yeah. you know, all the handlers see the progression. Uh, I mean, Ken, you, he, you know, when he was first started, he, he had to find a gentleman that was missing and he was searching an area. And unfortunately he found him in the stream, but his dog, you know, his dog indicated on the body in the stream. And, you know, so that family got to, got their loved one back. And, you know, we do a lot of water searches where there's drownings and those types of things. So it's as important to us to, to bring some closure, I guess. Closure, yeah, yeah to the family, and um, you know, it's that's important. I, I, you know, really does. It's a lot of times it's as important. You know? The big one, I think, is the the young lady you saved on the Appalachian Trail. That was years ago. Yeah, you got yeah, to her it, in time. Yeah, it's. I mean, we we had uh, a search on the Appalachian Trail uh, in the late '80s, and uh, we had five kids disappeared out of Delaware Water Gap and went hiking on the Appalachian Trail. Uh, Teen, young teenage and, and down in age. And uh, they were told, well, just follow the white blaze. It'll bring you right back to Delaware Water Gap. Well, it doesn't. It takes you to Georgia, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so they followed it. They actually crossed 191 oh um, yeah. and were on the, the western side of uh, 191 towards um, Wind Gap. And the one girl had gotten wet. It was uh, February. It was warm during the day, so they were lightly dressed. And at night it was cold. And to make a long story short, I mean, we, we searched for her for quite a while. And uh, 
we ended up uh, man virtually man tracking, not even with the dogs, visually tracking their footprints across 91, 191, which some of the authorities said, why would they cross the highway? Well, they were told follow follow the white. They went across and we, we tracked them down, found them in, early in the morning. The one girl was unconscious. She, uh, a six-year-old was unconscious. She had gotten wet, fell in a stream. And at night, it was below freezing. So they had a couple of uh, the boys that were with them were, were Boy Scouts, mm -hmm. put their training to use, mm -hmm. you know, tried to keep her warm and, you know. Thank God. So finding, finding those, you know, it, that saved her life. If we hadn't gotten to her, you know. She you, probably wouldn't have. Look, you know, it, just saving one life oh, yeah. where it makes what you guys do yeah. so rewarding. Yeah. It has to yeah. be. Absolutely. You know, just to go back, you know, we talk about the water rescues. There's so many lakes in this county or, mm. and in this northeast right. in your area. And yeah. I, the, uh, a while back, a young man drowned in a lake. Yes. The, the mud pretty much drew, yeah. took him right in. Am I right? Yeah. If you, you yeah. know about that one up yeah. in Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, the one out in Hamilton Township. Hamilton you know. Township. Yeah, he had, he had been swimming, and uh, he probably cramped up because the water was very cold below the surface and uh, went down and got stuck. And we, we did actually got called. Blue Ridge uh, Hook and Ladder called us in you know, pretty quick, and we got out there, and uh, we, at that time we did have divers, and we, we had a diver in the water. That's why I brought that up. Yeah. I remember um, you had divers. Yeah, diver. diver it was actually Dale Chan from yeah. D.C. Towing, a local guy, and mm -hmm. he went in, and uh, before I even got some gear and we got a backup diver in, he was in there and had the kid up, and you know we uh, start, got him out, started CPR, but unfortunately he didn't make it. No. And, you know. Hey, Kenny, what's, how important is the bonding between the handler and the dog? Well, you have to trust the dog and he has to trust you, so it's very, very important. Yeah. And you have to learn to read them, and they have to want to work for you. Yeah. And they don't want to work for you, and, and um, they, they just won't. They just won't be a good search dog. So that much, over a period of years, it, you know, that, that doesn't happen, right? You, it, it takes a long time to get that trust. Oh, oh yeah. It does, but that's part of the reason that uh, they're also our own dogs and they live with us. Yeah. So that's an ongoing process. Ongoing, like you said earlier, it was on, it's an ongoing training, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I mean, search and rescue to me is, you know, I've like been doing it for 40 years and it's, and I've had my days where I'm ready to pack it up, mm -hmm. you know, and, and say, why do I do this, you know, and, but it's, you know, it's that opportunity to serve mm -hmm. and, you know, hopefully get to, you know, to save a life or reduce the amount of grief that a family has. Mm -hmm. But uh, seeing the dogs work is, mm -hmm. is really probably one of the, you know, I mean, sh she got me through, I mean, after the Trade Center, I had mm -hmm. a lot of tough times. Mm -hmm. And having her there, and I had Falco at the time, but, you know, she, she kept my sanity a lot of times. Yeah. You know, and seeing the dogs work and seeing what they can do, I mean, it's, it's amazing. My old dog, find a drop of blood in the middle of a football field. Wow. You know, that's how sensitive they are. If somebody was missing someone, you know, a family member, some up here at the right. top of the mountain, they're gonna, they're, you know, of course they're called peace. Right. If they wanted to get a hold of you right away, you know, how could they contact you guys? Um, they can contact us, you know, through the website and, uh, you know. And that's northeastsearchandrescue.com? It's uh, nesar.org. Right? nesar.org. Yep. And they can get us, they get us there. I mean, the, uh, we have to have a request basically from the police, police department, department, fire department, yep. because mm -hmm. We're not a we're not directly a municipal agency. We're we're a nonprofit rescue squad, uh, mm -hmm. um, and we serve multiple counties. So I'm really looking forward to seeing Evie here in, in action outside. We're going to take it um, in a few minutes. We're going to go out there and take and take a look. So we're going to continue on. Legislative report will return in a moment. <laughs> Did you know that the chamber of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives contains a painting depicting the 24 hours of the day? Located in the center of the ceiling, the mural titled The Hours was created by artist Edwin Austin Abbey. This wonderful masterpiece charts the setting of the sun, moon, and the many stars that grace the heavens. 24 maidens, who each represent an hour of the day, begin each day in light and gladness and ends in solemn drapery carried on still shoulders. Now you know. Did you know that the state capitol is not only the epicenter of the Commonwealth's governing bodies, 
but was once home to 390 preserved Civil War flags. During the war, it was customary for each state to furnish their regiments in battle with flags representing their contribution to the Union Army. After the war, Pennsylvania's military department was responsible for collecting the flags, and in 1872, they were reverently housed in the Capitol. Following the completion of construction on the new Capitol building in 1914, the Civil War flags were removed to the Capitol Rotunda. They were kept untouched in custom-made flag cases until 1982 when the Capitol Preservation Committee initiated its Save the Flags project. Throughout the years, dust and long-term vertical display of the flags had begun to devastate the brittle silk fabric and painted designs. The flags were removed by local textile conservators and were repaired and preserved in storage units that protect the relics from light, dust, and excessive handling. Now you know. Welcome back to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Mario Scavello. My guest today been the Northeast Search and Rescue, uh, Bruce Barton, the, the, the captain, and uh, Ken and Ken Porter, and we've also been joined by Ron Emily. And Ron and I go back quite a ways. I used to coach girls softball, and Ron's daughter, Kira, was one of the best pitchers we've ever had at the top of the mountain. What a pleasure to have you, Ron. Yeah, and we're also joined with Nexi and with, with, with Abby, because um, we're going to do a little demonstration here. I know you have different types of dogs. A dog would sniff around a vehicle, for example, and get a scent and then look for someone. Right. And then there's another, there's a, I believe, what, what's Nexi going to be doing? Nexi's uh, an air scenting dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is opposed to the trailing dog which mm -hmm. would use a, a scenting article. So Nexi uh, is part of that training is does what they call a runaway and the runaway is just the very first stage. It gets the dog to understand the game because mm -hmm. it is just a game to them. That's They, they do it for the fun and the, yeah. to please their owner. Mm -hmm. So Nexi's gonna uh, run away and get Ron. Ron's gonna go down uh, over here in the in the wooded area and uh, get ready. Ron if you want to go down uh, and get ready and just let let uh, next yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. And there he is. Yeah. See, the dry. Yeah, I see it. All, I see it. The dogs. Yeah. Rip roaring, ready to go. Well, this yeah. gonna this gonna be interesting. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, all right, Nexi. All right, and Ron's getting staged. Uh huh. In the woods over here. He's ready to go. All right. And Ken, if you want to go up on the up on top Next here, I'll give you go. five bucks not to find Ron. <laughs> Where is he, Bubba? Where is he? Where give, is him a, he? give him an aisle. Where is he? Up there. Where is he? So he's going to... Where is he? Where? Guys, Where stand is still. He? Do not move. Go ahead. Find. There you go. Now you can move. So he's looking, he's looking for Ron. He didn't see where he went. So he's working the area. He's using his nose for scent. And he's he's looking for his ball. And he got him. All right. Oh, don't give him the ball. He's got him. Now he's gonna come back. He's gonna come back to Ken. Sit. Maxie. Max. Good boy. Sit. Oh, good boy. boy. So wow. good boy. very good. What he very does good is good uh he does the refine at mm -hmm. the end, comes mm -hmm. back in mm -hmm. and boy. brings the ball back to Ken. Mm-hmm. And uh, during an actual search, he wouldn't, the ball wouldn't be in play. because Nice job, Nexi. Nice job. The subject wouldn't normally have the ball. Yeah. So he'd just wow. come back and tell Ken, Great. hey, I found somebody. Great. Nice job. Very nice job. Hey, gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, visiting with me and uh, showing me the, what, what, what you do. And actually, you know, informing the public on what you do. Right. I think that's so yep. important. Yep. And, and I know, like, you, we, we talked about your, your issues with fundraising. Also, we're going to... On the on the screen, we're going to have your information, and and hopefully we can help you out in that sense. And again, thank yep. you for the service because I know it's volunteer. There's no salaries, but you guys are out there helping the community, and and I and I, and I thank you for it. Thank you've you. been you've been watching Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Mario Scavello. If you have thank any you. questions or, or any issues and state related issues, please contact me at my local office. The address and phone number will be on in a moment. Thank you again, and see you next time on Legislative Report. Thank you.